Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going over the topic of how to brief an instrument approach plate. When you're flying IFR, it's important you always stay ahead of the aircraft. And one way you can do that is brief any expected or what you anticipate may be instrument approaches for the destination airport that you plan to land at. Similarly, do the same thing for any alternate airport that you may be uh, expecting, particularly if you file for an alternate airport. Um, it's important that you do this so that when you're actually in flight, you can already have a clue on how to fly that approach. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through uh, the process that I use to brief an instrument approach plate. But before we get into it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video. Okay, so we're going to brief the ILS-8 into Laconia Airport. The first thing we want to do is take a look at the approach and the airport, that we've got the correct plate up. We also want to check the date over here to make sure that it's a valid plate. And then lastly, we want to take a look at the NOTAMs to see if there's any NOTAMs uh, that may prevent us from using this approach plate. Once we have confirmed that we have the right approach plate up for the right airport and it's a current plate, we want to take a look in the pilot briefing area. Particularly, we want to uh, look at this area here. Uh, for the purpose of this discussion, we're going to assume we're flying the ILS-8 into Laconia. So we're going to care that we've got the localizer uh, frequency of 108.5 uh, tuned into our NAV-1 radio, and that we have an approach course uh, tuned in the VOR uh, slash CDI needle of 084. Uh, we'll also take a look at the runway landing distance. Uh, you can determine from your own aircraft if you're going to have plenty of room to make a landing on that airport with 5,646 feet of available runway. We'll also note that the touchdown zone elevation and the airport elevation. The next thing we want to do is look at uh, this section of the pilot briefing to see if there's any appropriate items that we need to concern ourselves. For example, circling not available south of runway 826 uh, circling to runway 26 is not available at night. Also for uh, the lighting system, uh, if it's inoperable, we need to increase the um, um, visibility for CATs um, for aircraft by 1-8 statue mile. And the U-run fixed minimums increase to localizer 8s, CAT C and D, and so on and so forth. Uh, so you want to make sure you check the notes section that, to ensure that you can actually use the approach. So also at this point where I take a look to see if there's um, anything um, that may be also in the plan view, like such as down here, that might prevent me from using this approach plate. Next, we'll look at the lighting system that's available for this approach, and we'll also look at the textual missed approach procedure associated with the approach. The last section of the pilot briefing we'll look at is the frequencies we care about. So we're going to make sure we have the AWOS frequency tuned in well in advance of this um, actually flying this approach. Uh, we should be on Boston Approach already, talking with them on 134.75. Clearance delivery is associated with closing out the flight plan or activating a flight plan, so we're probably not going to care about that frequency. We will care about the Unicom or CTAF frequency of 123.0, so we'll probably keep that in our standby on, on COM1 with the uh, Boston Approach uh, active in COM1. Our weather will be on the Radio 2, COM2, and B on active. Next, we're going to take a look at the plan view. And this is where we kind of get a sense of where we are relative to the airport and where we could expect to come in on. If we're coming from the northwest, uh, we may be vectored to uh, get on to the final approach course um, via vectors. If we are coming from the south, we may be told to have an initial approach fixed, IAF, uh, the Concord VOR and fly the Concord VOR to the final approach course. Uh, notice that there's a Concord VOR involved, so we're gonna have that tuned up in our radios, our NAV2 radio, for example, tuned to 112.9 and on the R353 radio. We also wanna take a look that we have a missed approach procedure that takes us out to Onyer, and it's associated with the Kennebunk VOR, 117.1 um, frequency on the R300 radio. And again, as part of the Anya intersection, it's defined by that, that radio 300 radio of Kennebunk VOR, 
but also the Concord VOR on radio 006. Uh, we can also identify it via GPS as well. One other item in the plan view is the MSA. This is a minimum safe altitude. In the event you lose your navigation or get lost, confused, uh, you want to climb to 4,200 feet uh, within a 25 nautical mile radius of the Concord VOR in this case. The next part of the plate we want to look at is the profile view. And again, we're going to assume we're flying the ILS or precision approach in. We'll be flying at the altitude assigned by ATC, which will be at least 4,200 feet if we're coming in uh, at NILU. And then we will proceed inbound on the course till we get glide slope and we'll follow the glide slope down to our minimum altitude for the airport uh, for this approach. Uh, this thick V here is a vis visual descent point. Um, it's more associated with the uh, localizer or, or approach. So we're not gonna sweat it because we're flying the ILS-8 and we'll just continue to fly down, um, flying the glide slope down. If we were flying the localizer, then we would worry about flying the step downs, starting at 4,200 here, 3,100 by Wilby, which is the final approach fix. The, the uh, lightning bolt represents the precision um, approach with the ILS. The uh, Maltese cross represents the non-precision approach. But anyways, if we're flying the localized approaches, we would descend down to 3,100 feet till we get to Wilby, then step down to 1980 to U-Run, so we can identify it, till finally our, go to our MDA altitude, minimum descent altitude, and then basically hold that altitude till we get to no further than that um, visual descent point here with the V, and at that point make a decision to go missed. When you determine you need to go missed, uh, you can start that miss right away. You don't need to hold to a particular position. The next area we want to look at is the minima or minimum section. And it depends uh, on the category aircraft we're flying. For the purpose of this discussion, we're going to be flying a Piper Warrior or a Skyhawk would be appropriate as well, would be in the category A on um, category four, um, the VREF speed that we'd be flying. That's from 91 knots or less. Um, again, if we're flying the ILS-8 approach in, uh, we can go down to 795 feet and a half a mile visibility. So we need a minimum of 795 um, MSL and half a statue mile visibility. The 795 represents the decision altitude. Uh, the 250 you see here represents the decision height above the touchdown zone. If you actually add the 250 plus the touchdown zone elevation, you come up with 795 feet MSL. So the 795 feet is MSL, the 250 is AGL. So basically you're going down to 250 uh, feet above the touchdown zone um, elevation um, before you decide if you're gonna go missed or not. Um, there is an asterisk here that is associated with um, in the event you do not have um, the local altimeter. If you don't have the local altimeter, then you need to increase your DA to 876 feet. If we were flying the localizer, we could drop down to 1,980 feet for our MDA and need three-fourths quarter mile visibility. If we can identify the U-run fix uh, for the localizer, we can actually go down to 1,040 feet um, and as long as we have a half a statue miles of visibility uh, for that MDA. And similarly, we see circling uh, numbers as well. Again, without the U-run fix minimum identified, um, we can go down to 1,980 feet and need one and a quarter mile visibility. Uh, if we can identify the urine fix, uh, we can go down to 1,160 feet with one statue miles of visibility. And the urine fix is basically five and a half miles from the localizer. As long as we can identify that with um, uh, DME equipment or GPS, um, then we have that fix known. Uh, and then we can go down to these lower numbers again with the localizer circling. The last major point we want to look at in briefing the approach is the missed approach procedure. We have it here in an iconic form or icon form, where basically if we're gonna go miss, we're gonna climb straight ahead to 1150 feet before turning left to heading a 264 and climbing to 5000. We'll fly uh, on the, um, we'll intersect the 300 radio, the Kenny Bunk VOR, and we'll basically stay on that radio until we get to Anyer. We see that also um, pictorially viewed right here, where we come in and we fly to Anyer. Uh, and lastly, we see it in the textual view up here explaining that whole procedure. The last area we need to talk about is the airport diagram area. Uh, there's also um, an important aspect of this regarding um, flying the approach. 
You'll see down here, the final approach fix to the uh, map or missed approach point is 7.9 nautical miles away. And if we're flying at a um, VREF speed of 90 knots, it'll take about five minutes and 16 seconds to get there. So we can use that as well from a time perspective as we're flying these approaches in. Uh, but the main point of bringing this airport diagram up is it tells us what our elevation figure is above, uh, above sea level, tells us our touchdown zone elevation, um, and it also gives us a view of the runway, the length of the runway, width of the runway, and where it sits relative to um, the terminal. It also gives us our lighting system that's available to us um, at the airport. So that's how we brief an instrument approach plate. At least that's how I do it. Uh, there are a number of ways to do it, but I like to do it in somewhat of a chronological order uh, so that I kind of stay one step ahead of the plane at all times while I'm flying it. And again, it starts by uh, briefing that plate before I even get in the cockpit uh, for that IFR flight. Anyways, I hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.